The story of Beautiful Girl is a love story um, about two people with disabilities, a woman who has an intellectual disability and selective mutism, and a man who is deaf. Um, they've met in an institution for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities in 1968, and they're in love, and they seek to escape the institution to live in freedom. Their motivation for this is the woman was sexually assaulted, and they want to raise the child in freedom and be together as a family. They escape on a dark and stormy night, um, deliver the baby, and then are on the run to find a place where they can settle for the night. The place where they land is a farmhouse of a retired widowed school teacher named Martha who takes them in not knowing who they are or what's going on and is very alarmed because she knows something's very wrong. Um, after they enter her house, within hours, uh, they have put the baby to sleep and changed their clothes. And just as they're about to settle down to a meal, the authorities burst into the house, capture the woman. The man escapes out the window, and the baby is left behind. And just before the woman is taken away, she manages to get two words out to the widow. She says, hide her. And the widow is so horrified by what she's seen that she says, I will. And then the story follows the three different storylines. Um, the young woman's as she's taken back to the institutions, the man after he's escaped out the window, and the baby and the widow. Uh, and it covers the next 40 years. Um, where the book came from, I have a sister with an intellectual disability who was raised at home, who was not raised in an institution. And in America, at the time when my sister was born, which was 1960, a lot of parents were encouraged to send their children to institutions for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And sometimes were encouraged to cut off contact. Um, this always struck me as a tragedy. It was not something I experienced. Um, after I wrote a book about my sister, called Riding the Bus with My Sister, um, I ended up doing a lot of public speaking and met a lot of people who had lived in these institutions or worked in them or loved someone who'd been in them. And I started to feel it was very important to write this story. Uh, but I couldn't do it as nonfiction since I hadn't lived it. And I quickly realized as I started writing it that the advantage to my doing it in fiction was that um, I could write it from multiple points of view. So I could write it uh, among the points of view I could include would be a woman with an intellectual disability and a man who was deaf. Uh, and that was part of the um, power and the love of writing this book.